Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey, what's all we here? And I am terrified, terrified to go back to Goldenrod City because the streets aren't paved with gold. They're paved with the blood of Whitney's enemies. Hey, Pokemon Masters, uh, Toby? Toby, are you okay? You seem pretty scared. Yeah, I am, Loxton. I'm terrified. And I'm sure many of the viewers feel the exact same way as many people seem to remember this gym leader being particularly hard to beat. In fact, Whitney and her Miltank are infamous for it. Hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay. Maybe if we work together and use our noggins, we can... Use logic and reasoning to figure out why this normal type trainer is so tough. Now I know there's going to be some of you in the comments who are going to say that you never found Whitney hard to beat. And to you I say, good for you, but factually Whitney is one of the hardest gym leaders. Her placement in the game, the time that the game was released, the Pokemon available to you, abilities, move, effects, and of course type weaknesses and resistances. And I know you're thinking, type weaknesses? You don't have any. She's a normal type gym leader. Well, that's sort of true, but you probably don't have any type advantages on you either because fighting type moves are hard to come across. That's because the only way to get a pure fighting type with any decent type fighting type moves before this point in the game is to trade for a Machop in the Goldenrod department store, which is fine if you know where to look for it. But even then, you've got to trade for a Pokemon that's potentially quite rare, a Drowsy or an Abra. Both of these Pokemon have a low encounter rate, and Abra is famous for teleporting away. And speaking of this Machop, it becomes the level of the Pokemon you traded for it. Meaning, if you cut one of these Pokemon solely for the purpose of trading, that means you're looking at a level 10 to 12 Machop. Which, I mean, it does have a few good fighting moves, but it still does not stand a chance against Miltake at this moment. Especially considering Machop have a 75% chance of being male, and Miltank are 100% female. And Whitney's Miltank knows a tract. Let's just say the odds are not stacked in your favor. Though, there's also Heracross, which is another fighting type, and Heracross happens to know Arm Thrust, which is... a very pathetic move, actually. But it also knows Counter, which... I mean, it could counter Miltank. If it could survive a hit. Not that it matters anyway, as capturing a Heracross is very tricky. You have to go off of the path of the main story, find Headbutt, go back to the town prior, start using Headbutt on trees, and even then, Heracross is rare. Like, really rare. And then when you finally do catch one, it's low level, and you have to level it up a bunch. I mean, how do new trainers even know how to do this? There is one other fighting type move available to you in the form of Pinsir, but again, rare is the word as Pinsir is one of the hardest Pokemon to catch in the bug catching contest, and again, it's at a relatively low level. And forget about training it because the National Park is one of the last areas you can reach without having Whitney's gym badge. This means that you've probably battled all the trainers and aren't going to have a lot of opportunities to level up. And to be honest, as far as type advantages go, those are your best shots at beating Whitney's Miltank. But of course, you might have your starter Pokemon evolved by now. Of course! After all, your starter Pokemon is the trusty Pokemon that you've carried through the game so far. And if you're in the majority, then you started off with a Cyndaquil, which means you now have a Quilava. While okay, Quilava, Croconaut, and Bailiff all get outsped by Miltank, Quilava is a bit of a problem because Whitney's Miltank uses the move Rollout, which is a Rock-type move. And of course, that's super effective against Quilava. And with the other two Pokemon, you're just looking at having an average battle between two Pokemon of the same level, except there's a 50% chance that your Pokemon is going to be male, which means it'll be immobilized by love. Aha, but what other highly leveled Pokemon do you have? Well, you just came through a forest and defeated a bug gym, so you likely have a very strong Pidgeotto. Oh wait, flying's also weak to rock. Maybe you need to be more tactful and start applying status effects, but the problem with that is that in the remix, Miltank now holds a Lumberry which heals all status effects once. But maybe you're persistent, and you do manage to get it poisoned or paralyzed after that, so you start taking down its HP bit by bit, but eventually it just heals itself with milk drink. Or Whitney uses one of her two super potions, and Miltank healing itself is not something you want because its HP stat is ridiculous. 
Well, what I think is your best option for this gym is a Geodude or an Onyx. Both these Pokemon are resistant to rock and normal type moves, meaning they are ideal for being defensive and tanky against Miltank. They don't dish out a lot of damage, but it's your best option in terms of doing a little bit of chip damage. Of course, you will still have to flip a coin to see if your Pokemon is a Geodude or a Geodudette to see if it's immobilized by love, but this, I think, is your best option. And in fact, it's not unlikely that a lot of new players will go this route. Of course, back in the day, the reason a lot of older generation players have a memory of this event going on with Whitney is because they got the games when they were brand new. Brand new, gold, silver, crystal, and guess which Pokemon they didn't want to play with? The Generation 1 ones. You see, when you take all of these factors into account, it's not that hard to see why so many trainers view this as one of the most challenging gyms. But while her Pokémon is a tank, hence the name, she can be beaten. With determination and the power of using your noggin, if you believe in your team, you can destroy her, defeat her, and- uh, Oh, what? She doesn't want to give me my badge. Jeez, lady, don't have a cow. So I hope I've given you some foreknowledge for the next time you take on the Goldenrod City Gym. She is a tough one to defeat, and the only reason Ash really defeated her in the show is because his father is a Pokemon master. His father. You do know, of course, who his father is. No, it's not Giovanni, Professor Oak, Silver, or Mr. Mime. It's okay, because I know, and if you want to click the annotation on screen or in the description, we'll go on over to Noggin's channel, where we talk very much in depth about who Ash's dad really is. See you over there, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master.